Okay. All right. We're back here at Radical Civics. And actually, we got a mention in the Memphis Flyer. Did everybody see the, uh, everybody see the magazine? Alan Stewart Graff reaches Radical Civics. Well, they did a whole thing on the farm school. Did you read that? Yeah. About how, how you guys get to order the teachers around? They called Peter. It was Peter Kind. Field. Field. Yeah, yeah. Kind. Oh, that actually is a pretty good, a pretty good um, uh, article. I think it was actually good. Um, so anyway, we've been, I've been gone for a few weeks. You all had a chance to um, meet with the, an aide to Congressman Lincoln Davis. How was that? Can anybody give me uh, what they thought of Lincoln Davis? Here, let me, why don't, you, why don't you pass the microphone and just use it? Tell me, tell me, tell me what it was like. We didn't get to meet him. Oh, but you got to meet his aide. Yes. And what, um, it was not at all what we had expected it to be. Um, she was there mostly to answer questions from people who had like problems with their social security and that sort of stuff. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Were you impressed with the way they responded to your questions? No, um, she didn't have the she didn't have the info to answer any of our questions. Okay. And Karuna, you want to say something? You, did you, uh, were you impressed? What was her name? Do you remember? Yeah. Okay. Um, she basically, like, avoided our questions, and, like, she told us about, like, all the stuff that she does when she travels and the fact that she got married and, like, all this stuff, but she didn't really answer anything we asked. What kind of questions did you ask her? We like thought of questions beforehand and then assigned some like, like a couple people to ask them. So I, I don't really remember exactly what they were like. One of them I think was like, does Lincoln Davis have any like? Is he's really into education stuff? Like, does he have anything against the fact that they're putting more like a bunch of money into the war and are barely able to put any money into schools and stuff like? Okay. How does she feel and, about that and stuff like that? And she didn't answer. She did. She answered. Hold on. Lincoln Davis has two mules as pets. Here. What, what, what did she tell us? Yeah. She, 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 so we asked her the questions. What is Mr. Davis's policy on Social Security? Um, he's got two mules as pets, and I'm living a dirt road. He's got a truck. He loves his truck, man. Oh, wow. It's a great truck. It's a big, big red pickup truck. Um, any more questions? Like that. Yeah. That was it. You have my paper? I actually, I read something really funny. I can't remember. Okay. I may have it down here. Oh, and then that was another. Here you go. Yeah, yeah. But, um. Sorry, you can that one? The staffer, after realizing that we were there to ask some hard questions, hard questions, began talking and talking and talking. Some high points of Lincoln Davis's staffer, staffer's talk uh, were Lincoln Davis lives on the end, end of a dirt road when not in Washington. Lincoln Davis has two teachers, dot, 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 who are teachers, and Lincoln Davis has two mules. After telling us all of that important information, she was unable to tell us the way that Lincoln Davis voted on many important bills. So she's supposed to be Lincoln Davis's voice to the public. Don't you think she should know more about the bill, about bills the congressman votes on than how many mules he has? Okay. So, all right. So, you weren't too impressed? No. So, what do you think, what do you think, uh, she, what was her purpose then for being, meeting the public? What do you, do you think she was there to inform or was it more just to kind of help? worked just like on one and like one on one with people who would come in and talk with her and about like like and she said that a lot of people asked her about the war and then this guy who came in and was just like, Well, I don't have anything to say about the war and then said something and then like yeah, on about how Richard Nixon was the best president. Yes. Oh, somebody love somebody like Richard Nixon. He's not a coward. I was just like, <laughs> all right. George Bush, like, was letting all that baby butchering happen. Baby 
torturing commies. Were you there? Did you go? Of course I was there. All right. Well, I'm glad. Did you ask any questions? Uh, I, I sat and listened and kind of cracked up. Most oh, okay. You just but left. I hear the obese man talking about baby butchers and how Bush, like, um, bows down to them and how strong and he bows down Bush, and Bush would be, down. but he, he has not um, held up to his expectations and... Uh, we do have social, or we do have um, health care for well, everybody, everybody, but we might have two. Yeah, so what, everybody does. What did, what did you think of that guy's opinion? It sounds like you, you felt like you, you had an opinion about his opinion. Um, well, about the baby butchering, I think um, that, I mean, it's the woman's choice. I mean, it's her. I mean, it's not your baby. Her baby, if she wants to have a baby, that's it. And about the too much health care, I mean, people need health care. Right. I don't and care if you have health care. Yeah. Yes. Everybody doesn't have health care. Many, many people don't have health care. His thing is that everybody has health care. They're just too lazy to get a job and make enough money to pay emergency room bills. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. So, you know, we're. Uh, We've been talking, we, we've, um, next, uh, you know what actually I'm trying to do next week is I'm going to try to get somebody from the Sheriff's Department to come down here. And so I'm going to, hoping I'm today, class. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, well, let's see, no, I think it'll be good. What I want to do today, what I want to do today with you is talk about the Fourth Amendment. And I'm going to teach you about what your rights are under the Fourth Amendment or what, um, what rights you don't have because it's really been watered down quite a bit. And then get you so you're, you know so much about this, you're going to be able to ask any policeman who walks in here a bunch of really good questions, okay? We're going to talk a little bit about, we, I, that's why I ran the video today, give you sort of a funny view on what happens when you're stopped in a car. But let me go back and, and why don't you just um, z uh, zero in on this for us. Can, can, can everybody, uh, hold on a minute. Everybody see these? Remember, we've, got, we've been going through the Bill of Rights, but the only thing we've actually looked at is Amendment Number One. Amendment Number One is, I'll get over here so I can read it. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or oppress or the right of the people peaceably to assemble or and to petition the government redress of, of grievances. So we've spent about four or five classes on one amendment, the First Amendment. Probably sick of the First Amendment already. I just want to go through some of the other ones. This is the Bill of Rights. Amendment 2 is a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Everybody ever heard of the NRA? National Rifle Association, they love the Second Amendment. That's what they're all about. And most Tennesseans, if they feel like in any way you're going to infringe on their right to bear arms, whether it's submachine guns, bazookas, bombs, maybe even missiles, if you infringe on their right, their God-given right, their Second Amendment right to bear arms, and you're not going to get, you're not going to get their vote. There's a lot of people very very religious about the Second Amendment. But what's the Second Amendment about? Anyway, why was it in here? What's the purpose? What was the original purpose of the Second Amendment, just as it, as it reads? Was it like to keep the English out? Like, I mean, just like from their perspective, the reason they put it in there, the colonists and stuff, would be like the, so the English wouldn't come in. That's like couldn't get reinvaded as soon as they just... Right. The, basically, the, ba the, the basic purpose of the Second Amendment is if the government gets too powerful, we all got guns. We can go out and take over. You know, we, everybody have a gun, we'll march on the White House. Take it over, because we'll have the guns. That's the purpose. But what the Second Amendment has actually become is a hunter's, the hunter's right, to shoot ducks any way they want to shoot them, or deer. Or to yell, it's coming right for us. Now, even if you're a hunter... Why would you need automatic weapons? Why would you need submachine guns to go out there and shoot deer? Deer I mean, are vicious. You want to fight the nuclear super deer with your submachine gun. Right. Guns. Why would you need bazookas? Why would you need bazookas? They actually sell 
That's right, they do. So people, you know, so the first, the Second Amendment, just think about that. It's very interesting. And first of all, the, the thing that, I, that I've always, always thought was very interesting, the government, as it is now, the Bush administration, hates the First Amendment. They think the First Amendment is very dangerous. That's why we've had laws that have established religion. We have, you know, Bush constantly trying to give money to more right-wing Christian organizations. Yeah. My dad said, um, Rachel, about a few weeks ago, they read something that on the Second Amendment, yeah. they're trying to figure out what the people means now, and then they're saying that the people means the military and stuff and not everybody else. Oh, well, that's the way it's been. Yes, and yeah. they're trying to change that now. Who's trying to change that? Um, I think Bush and the government is uh -huh. trying to change the Second Amendment. Right. Do you, have, do you have guns at home? Does your dad use guns? No? I, I'm, I'm not, I have no opinion for or against him. But, okay, so the Second Amendment was put together so the people could overthrow the government in case it got out of hand. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, so not be infringed. In other words, government gets out of hand, like we got our rifles, right? But yet, Bush and co. look at the First Amendment as more dangerous than the Second. They're more of afraid of people assembling, people using free speech, people using the press. The power of the word is scarier to a administration, the Bush administration, that's become more and more totalitarian. Why is that? Why is free speech scarier to a government like the Bush administration than the right of the people to bear arms. Why is that? Does anybody know? Anybody have an idea? Why is the spoken word more dangerous? It has the power to influence the masses. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you expand upon that? It has, the word has the power. Free speech has the ability to go from house to house all over the nation and to allow people to rebel against the government, to change people's minds, to go against the right-wing media that's attacked our nation. That's right. Like, for instance, your words today, since we're putting this on YouTube, will go out potentially to thousands of people. And But if you had a gun, how many thousands of people could you influence? Not many. You could, maybe you could. Maybe you couldn't shoot as many people as your word would reach out there. Well, well anyway. Yeah, what's I that? I disagree with you. I think that... I okay, think now, be, remember, you're on film. Well, I think that... Uh, I think that there's... Um, that, that... You know, you don't need guns to influence people, but due to the fact that you can't influence people when somebody else has a gun pointed at you. Yeah, then well... you sort of need guns to even out the playing field. Well, the American Revolution that put all of these principles in place was violent. They didn't just say, Hey, King George, you suck! They had guns and weapons. George Washington had a whole army. He didn't go... We shall overcome. They would have been shot down, mowed down. So there was a violent revolution that started. Che Guevara agrees with Noah and Fidel Castro. They think that violent revolution is the only way to make fundamental changes. So well, I don't think that violent revolution is the only way to make fundamental changes. Okay. I just think that having weapons is vital to change because... People with weapons can stop your change, and you won't have anything. You can't do anything about it. But they also might not try to stop your change, and you wouldn't have needed. Yeah. It, when you say weapons, because some people say the press is a weapon. My voice today out there is a weapon. What I say is a weapon. Remember, uh, Ray Abelea was talking about ideas are weapons. Poetry is weapon. Dance and music could be a weapon. Think about that. 
Yeah. At the SOA. At the SOA, yeah. The cops had this box that anybody with a wooden cross, they'd have to drop their cross because it was this, like, horribly dangerous weapon. No, it was the cross. It was the ones, was the ones that were broken slightly or with edges that were too finely cut. Because, because they were like, our crosses. Yeah. Right, right. That was, that was dead. But we, was that stupid? Wasn't it stupid that um, they limited the size of the crosses? You could only have like a cross that was like, you know, a foot and a half long, but it was a foot and, and, and uh, eight inches long. They wouldn't let you in with it. And there was actually a big hassle about that. That's control. Oh, they, Okay, you guys all have to get to the curb. You can't stand in the road now. Like, you're not allowed. And then this guy had a sign up at, like, the beginning of where it was, where you couldn't drive, like, where all the people were. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then the, a cop walked up and said, like, you can't have a sign there. Like, you have to yeah. take it down. And did that make any sense to you? No. Did it, did it make any sense at all? Was there any danger? Do you think there was any danger? said was go vegetarian. Go. <laughs> it was dangerous, see? That proves the power of the word. They were afraid. They were afraid of the word. Okay, Amendment 3. No soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner nor in time of war, but in manner to be prescribed by law. That's Amendment number 3. In other words, let's say I'm on, I'm on the board, okay? And I decide, the board of directors decides that um, the kind fields are going to put me up. I, tonight, I come over to your house, Noah and um, Karuna, and I walk in. I say, I'm sleeping over here. Get out of your bed. By order of the board of directors, out of your bed. It's my bed. Get out. Sleep on the floor. It's my bed. And, I, and I'm staying here for a week, and you feed me and take care of me. The government says so. That's what Amendment Number 3 is, because during the Revolutionary War and even before, soldiers would just walk into your house and say, I'm taking over, Zach. It's my house. Get your ass out. Yes, sir. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> All right, so that's why they have that, but that hasn't happened. Now we get to the Fourth Amendment. Hey, stop back in. The Fourth Amendment. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. They had, um, and I'm going to actually... During those times before the revolution, this is all the Bill of Rights. They had what were called writs of assignment. Writs of assignment. And a writ of assignment, they could go into your house, just with a little piece of paper, someone would scrawl it, and tear all of, everything apart. They'd go into your clothes, throw your clothes away, look everywhere, just take anything they want. And people didn't like that. People have a certain sense of privacy. And you don't want somebody from the government going into um, your house and um, just taking anything you want. So that's where the Fourth Amendment started. And they say, a warrant. Does everybody know what a warrant is? Yeah. Okay, why don't you describe that? Tell me what a warrant is. I'll give you the mic. Uh -huh. Well, do your best. Go ahead. Um, it's a piece of paper. Yeah, it's a piece of paper that um, lets the uh, authorities do what it says. That right, do what they want to do. Yeah. The warrant says you're able to search, Sorry. you know, empty out your pockets for us. I want to see if there are any drugs in there. No. I'm just kidding. Okay, 
But that was, that's what the warrant would say. Or go, or go in the forest house, look at his computer, see if there's any subversive material on there. And the warrants, so you can't, so, so th there's a few different places that you have privacy. One is your home. That's like your castle. You know, where you don't want anybody just walking into your house. Right, Zach? Yeah. Just walking out. I can't, I can't just go over to Zach's house and start rummaging through all your stuff, right? Yeah. What about if I was a cop? You would really not like that, right? Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. You, no, you wouldn't like that. So that's the home. We, we protect the home. We also protect you on the street. If you're out there in the street, everybody was at the SOA. You noticed there wasn't, it was actually pretty good. The cops wouldn't hassle you unless you had your cross was too long or you had a mask on. By the way, this is interesting. Um, remember that there was, there's a law in Georgia that says you can't wear a mask. And they were actually enforcing it. Did anybody see people get arrested for wearing masks or being hassled at the school in the Americas? Can't wear masks in Georgia. Right. What about Halloween? Halloween. Or what about if you're a Muslim woman? I didn't. I thought about it. We should have had Muslim women come to the school in the Americas, and they all wear a veil around their face as part of their religious practice. You know, we should have had like a hundred of them show up and then see what the cops would have done. But in your car, the car has become, there's volumes and volumes and volumes and many, many, many court decisions about what happens in your car. Your phones, you know, you have a right to not have your phones tapped unless there's a warrant. Richard Nixon, God bless his soul, decided he didn't need a warrant to do that sort of thing, especially with the Democratic headquarters. He what? wiretapped all their phones. And now there's the internet. If I email Zach, yo Zach, I think George Bush sucks. I write an email out. Well, does, does the people who work for George Bush have the right to intercept my email to Zach and then put it in a file that says, Alan Graff hates the president, we better watch him? Do they have, do they have a right to do that under the Fourth Amendment? Okay, well, yes and no. Anyway, the, what they've, what they've um, you need warrant. You need a warrant for somebody to go in your home. Unless, unless, let's say, somebody is running into Karuna's home, okay, and the cops are chasing him, and he runs into the house, slams the door and goes, Aha! I'm in here. You can't come in here without a warrant. You think the cops could bust the door down if they're running after him? If he committed a crime, let's say, he shot somebody, stabbed somebody, robbed the bank, runs into Karuna's house, slams the door. Do they have to go get a warrant or can they bust in? They shoot they, through the door. What's that? They shoot through the door. Well, do they need a warrant? Do they need a warrant to go after that person? No. They don't. If, they're fo if, they're, if, they, if there's a crime in progress, they see a crime in progress, if they're if they're coming by your window and they see Noah um, making, uh, uh, if they, they pass by Noah's house and they look in his window and he's got a, me a meth lab set up, they could bust down, they could walk into his house without a warrant. They'd see it happening. And a lot of times cops will say, yeah, I saw it happening, and they, they lie. They don't really tell the truth, and they bust in without the warrant. But with your house... Most of the time, you need a warrant. And the warrant usually says something really specific, only search the bedroom and so forth. And you know how they get a warrant? The warrant is signed by a judge. And, so, and the cops have to go to the judge and show the judge they have probable cause to get a warrant. What's probable cause mean? Uh, good really good reason. Very good reason. Probable cause... Let me give you probable cause. This is sort of a term of art. Probable cause. The probable cause means where there are known facts and circumstances of a reasonably trustworthy nature are sufficient to justify a man, they say, of reasonable caution or prudence that a crime has been or is being committed. So what does that mean? That sounds like a lot of gobbledygook, doesn't it? And... Um, Probable cause can come from different things, like observation, for instance. 
through your sight, smell, and hearing. Let's say, for instance, I smell marijuana. Who's smoking it? That's part of the probable cause. I'm using my nose. A cop can have a nose. They can smell something if, they're, if they stop and pull you over and they smell drugs. You know, that's part of probable cause. There's expertise. Some cops are trained in, like, gang awareness. You know, like, you dude, you know, having big baggy pants or something or looking a certain way. They're going to, like, the cops who think, oh, this guy is a gang. He might, you know, um, be prone to do something that other people won't. Recognition of burglar tools. Um, there's also flight. Let's say I suddenly run out of this room. He's gone. You can swear now. Oh, you're back. Well, if a cop saw me run down the hall, split out the door, that might be a piece of evidence. They would think, why is Kraft doing that? But you're white. <laughs> you know what? They do think, cops, of course, think that way. They're not supposed to. And we're going to get to a case a little bit later where the main thing about the case is the guy's Hispanic, but nobody ever says it. They never admit it. That's the reason they pulled them over. Then there's furtive movements, secretive or concealing. A movement can be, can't be construed as an innocent gesture, like looking both ways before crossing the street. For instance... You know, say I wanted to steal this biology book. I'd like, okay, hey, I'll see you all later. You know, a cop sees this and thinks, like, what's going on? Obviously, he doesn't know what I got. He doesn't even know I'm stealing something, but he can kind of look and tell that maybe I am about to steal something. Okay? They, well, I'm about to have a... Either, really, either, either he's going to take me to jail or call a midwife. All right? Then there's uh, admitted ownership. Where someone says, uh, you know, hey, do you own everything in your pocket? Yeah, he says, well, empty it. And everything that comes out, oops, never mind. <laughs> like that. Everything in your pocket? And, no, I better not show you that one either. So... That's kind of, that's evidence, all right? Or false or improbable answers. Like someone asked me, what's your name? Alice. That's kind of an improbable answer. I go, okay, what's going on here? So all of those can be sources of probable cause. And um, then there's indirect sources where somebody informs the cops Informants are a big source of getting a warrant. They say, well, I call up, I'm anonymous. I say, I call up the police station. I say, I know that Zach committed that armed robbery. How do you who told you about that? Exactly. At the bank the other day. I know that. And um, he was there at 3 o'clock and he left at 4. And I hang up. So don't tell the cops who it was. Is that enough? Would you call that probable cause? Can the cops then take that, put it, go to the judge and say, we need a warrant to search Zach's house because we want to see if he's got any of the stolen goods. Just somebody calling, anonymous like that. What do you think? Would that be a probable cause? Would that, would that reach? Here's the definition again. Where the known facts and circumstances are sufficient to justify a man of reasonable caution that a belief that the crime has been or is being committed. Just somebody calling up and, and ratting out Zach. Is that enough? Well, see, let's say, see, well, let's say they walked into Zach's house on the basis of that. They got the warrant. They walked in and they found all the stolen goods there. Would that, but that's after they got the warrant. I'm talking about before. Now, let's say later on, a good defense attorney will, will, will challenge the warrant and say, Judge, there was not probable cause here. Just some nutcase calling up the police. And um, 
and saying that Zach had stolen stuff, that's not enough. That's not probable cause. But what do the cops say? But we found the stuff. Who cares? It doesn't work that way. They could get, a good defense attorney could get all the evidence of the stolen goods thrown out so the jury never hears it because the warrant itself was bad. There wasn't probable cause. But let's say they get the nutcase. Somebody calls up and says, Zach, Zach you know, was at the, uh, at the bank and he stole all this stuff. And then they get one other person who verifies that, or they find out that Zach was seen by another person around the bank at the time. Something that verifies the first thing. Then they've got probable cause. Then they go to a judge and get a warrant. Okay? That's probable cause. Let's take um, five minutes and come back here, and we'll talk a little bit more. Okay? Well, let's be back at 10 to 5, okay?